Gentlemen, welcome back to the room formerly known as the Wife Sewing. Today we are doing the zenith of dorkly goodness. What takes pixies, normally sedate, out of the wall, angries them up to high voltage and gets droplets of fluid to dance around. The paths of microfluidics are relatively untrodden. You might call them rather obscure, especially in the travels that I circle in. However, there is an interesting project going on. Somebody's making a microfluidic display to do some sort of lab work. I'm more interested in making it into a game, but I wanted to buy the kit. Can't buy it. Well, if you can't buy it, you got to make it. Essentially, what we're doing is we're creating a capacitor and we're putting little droplets of water in between the platens of the capacitor. Then we're applying a high voltage. That makes an electrostatic field. If you move that field around, the water droplets will follow. That's all that's going on here. Not too much on the black magic, really. However, just getting the thing to chooch is going to be a challenge because we don't have all the gear. Again, you ain't got the tools what for doing the job. You got to make the tools to do the job. Ooh, that's tricky. So, apparently I was a little optimistic in my perusal of the technical material, and I need more voltage. Now, step by each, instead of dicking around with the relays and so forth, we're going to just try and get the bubble or the droplet to be affected by the electrical field. So, in order to do that, we have an isolation transformer turned around. What normally happens is you put 240 or 120 in here, drops it down to 24 volts, I swapped it around so that if we put in 24 volts, we get out 240 volts. Now, this is a 1000 volt rectum fryer. However, these are only 250 volt electrolytic claps. So, yeah, exactly. You get a massive clap if you turn that on. So what we are doing is we are putting these in series, positive to negative, and so forth in order to get 500 volts out of this well here's red hot angry pixies in your eye we're starting to get into electro boom territory some about going past what is typically healthful in regards to electricity what makes your penny pucker and i am just tweaking the variac ever so slightly and it's just fucking jumping two hundred volts DC two fifty DC three hundred DC we'll go to four hundred and uh, starting to get the terror sweats Oh, with good reason. Something on fire here. The current limiting resist orb for the LED. The problem what's going on with that is that resist orb does not have enough wattage. It can't handle the heat. Now, P equals IV, so I is 20 milliamps, 0 0.02 times 500. Well, that's 10, <laughs> that's 10 watts, and this is a quarter watt resist orb. So that's what's going on. 
So I am going to go ahead and just put the biggest resistor, highest value resistor I can put in there. One million ohms. There's a sobering thought. I quickly did a little back of the envelope calculation and even with a million ohm resistor at 500 volts, we are right at the maximum. We're at a quarter watt. So really when you get into the higher voltages, it seems to me that you're more worried about the wattage than anything. Contact. Oh, for fuck's sakes. And the first pad, populated with some uh, oxides of hydrogen. Key contact. I'm going to bring her up. Real slow like. Just barely a sign of life. Changing the contact angle between the surface and the ball. I think maybe the captain tape is too thick. But I have no idea how thick Captain Tape is. I'm going to find out. 62 and a half thou. Double sided. We'll take that off. So it's about uh, uh, one and a half thou. In the film plastics industry, we'd call that one and a half mil. And now I got some cling wrap there, Soran wrap, and some canola oil rapeseed oil. Now the cling wrap is half a thou. So we're going to have far better results here. We got a wee dog of water in betwixt two pads. We are going to energize this kitty corner fire corner pad and then we're going to ground out the bubble. Now you can hear this sizzling. We are having an effect of some sort. Onward and upward. While we let this draw down, I have a static dissipative window here and we can see it's not conductive from one side to the other. So it is a coating on there, but it's very high resistance. 35 mega ohms. So we'll see if that works. If not, I'll have to order some more parts. Uh, conductive glass essentially is what we might need. Electro wedding test 312. Now we got, we are going to energize this one, this pad, to 350 volts DC, and then we are grounding the clear pad and we are grounding all the adjacent pads. We're trying to get this bubble of water to pop over onto this pad. Three hundred and seventy five volts DC. Nothing happening. Next up, a slightly smaller droplet, as well as a second. This will all be negative, grounded. This will be positive. We're gonna bring it up, bring up the voltage as well. We are monitoring to ensure that this platen here is grounded. So we're checking the voltage on that as well. Now this is interesting because even though we're only worried about electrostatics, because this is not a conductive plate, it's just static dissipative, we are not seeing the voltage that we want. See, I'm up at, uh, I'm up at 100 volts now and we're only getting 22. Slowly climbing. No, not even. Yeah. So that's what's going on. The cynical amongst us will no doubt agree with me that this was an unmitigated disaster. Does not chooch fail. <laughs> total fail. However, it's not a total fail in so far as we learned something. At least I learned something and I learned something the hard way. And when it's the hard way, it sticks with you. So this needs to be absolutely conductive. It cannot just be static dissipative. And this guy, yeah, this guy works great. Simple little rectifier. We've got protection here, current limiting resistor. We've got a poly fuse. We've got a indicator light. We've got a bleed down resistor. And we have two caps in series, front to back, in order 
to get the voltage that we need. 250 volts, but we can get 500 volts nominal out of these. Okay, so next time. Next time it's going to work for sure. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.